Book of Psalms, chapter number eight in the Amplified Version, it reads, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. You have displayed your splendor above the heavens. Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries that you might silence the enemy and make the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have established, what is man? Another translation says, when, when I think about your heavens and the moon and the stars that you've established, I just have to ask you this question, why do you think about us? Why, why do you bother yourself with mere humans? What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of earthborn man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. The Message Bible reads this way, God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. This is the part that made me almost throw my phone. It says, nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. All that goo goo gaga, all that all that little baby talk that we can't seem to understand and have no idea what they're talking about. They're, 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 they're doing choruses. They, they're talking about God and, 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 and how magnificent and wonderful he is. Nursing infants Google, gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk. And they silence atheist babble. I look up at your macro skies, dark and enormous, your handmade sky jewelry, moon and stars mounted in their settings. Then I look at my micro self and wonder, why do you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? Yet you've We've so narrowly missed being God's bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world. Repeat it to us. Your Genesis charge made us stewards of sheep and cattle, even animals out of the wild, birds flying and fish swimming, well singing oceans deep. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. This morning we're talking about God is a wonder. God is a wonder. So when I was younger, um, you know, growing, growing up, there, there was uh, a whole bunch of us. We, we, mom had two boys, dad had two girls that came together. They had five more. And so it, it, it was always a lot of us, and, and we traveled all the time. Um, you know, uh, Bishop was a traveling evangelist at that time, and so, um, you know, we went everywhere. We, we, we followed her everywhere she went, and, you know, on the road, we, we learned. We were homeschooled, so as we traveled, we, we were taught. We were uh, uh, taught instruction. We were taught, uh, you know, we were given education. We were taught the do's and the don'ts, the rights and the wrongs, the you better and you better not, amen? amen. And, and, and all, uh, all along the way, even though there was a whole bunch of us, we still, they still somehow managed to keep, it, keep us all together. 
and even in growing up, I would, and even to this day, I would still hear stories about how people are, are just in awe of how, how Bishop can have five children under the age of five and we sit quietly on the front row of church. And how is it that, that you all are so well behaved? And how is it that, that, that everybody is always intact, not realizing that, that, that we were afraid of a very real threat? I told y'all before, Bishop Stephanie is completely different from Evangelist Stephanie. It was, a, it was a huge difference between the two. But, but outside of that threat, we, we also had this, this sense of awe, this sense of reverence, this sense of honor for our parents. It was this it was this, this, this sense of reverence and awe that kept us together, not only when we were in the vicinity of their presence, but it was this same awe and reverence that kept us together even when we felt like they were nowhere near us. Not only did we act like we knew them when we were around them, but we also act like we were associated with them when they were nowhere near us. Lionel, even to this day, to this day, I don't stand too close to Bishop when she's talking to another adult because I remember when I was a child, she said, children stay out of grown folks' business. There was something that was instilled in us when we were little that, 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 that carried over with us and always tapped us on the shoulder any time we wanted to do what we wanted to do, any time we wanted to go where we wanted to go, any time we wanted to associate with the people that we wanted to associate with, there was this sense of awe, this sense of reverence, this sense of wonder about our parents that that kept us in line. This, this, this sense of awe, and you know, it's, it's, it's almost as if, um, as children, our parents, in a sense, are our gods. They are, they are our first uh, uh, understanding or our, our first a visual, they are the first people that we see that are bigger than us. The, the, the people that, that we have mystery about, the people that we think know everything, the people that always provide when provision is needed, the people that are there to protect us and shield us and cover us, the people that are there to walk alongside us and train us and nurture us and guide us in the things of life. It's, it's, it's our parents that that give us this first sense of uh, how to be respectful and how to honor. And, and, and even as children, we feel as though these beings in our lives will never go anywhere. And that's one of the things that cause so much heartache when, when, when we lose a parent. It's because that child inside of us no matter what age we are when we lose our parents, that child deep inside of us is dealing with some heartbreak because something has shattered that they thought would never, ever shatter. Do I have any witnesses to this? And so it's this, this sense of awe that we have, this awe. It's, uh, to be in awe of something is to have an overwhelming feeling of reverence and admiration and, 
and fear of. And, and, and Deacon Vince, we were talking last week and when we were, we were talking about uh, a guide for sheep and, and in the course of the message, we were saying that, that we can't sometimes see God as our shepherd. We can't see God as our provider because somewhere along the line, somewhere along life's journey, we've lost our awe for God. We've lost our, our wonder for God. We've, we've lost that feeling that anything is possible with God. And we've accepted that our excitement about God, we've accepted that our, our, our awe of God has reached its apex. Why, why do, why do people lose their sense of wonder? We lose our sense of wonder because we start to get older. We start to get experienced. We start to, to learn about life. And so, so often we lose our sense of wonder at how God operates and we lose, in losing this sense of wonder, we lose our ability to see the possibility or the richness of God. And so we've made everything about us and our ability and have made God common or regular. The conveniences and, and the luxuries that we enjoy in our very much privileged lives has caused us to get comfortable with God. And so we don't place him in the seat of honor and reverence and awe like we used to. We don't, we don't sing the same songs that the old folks sing about God carrying us over and over and over again, because somewhere at some point in our lives, we thought we've got it all figured out. That we can make this bad boy work all on our own. And instead of praying that his presence be made manifest, realizing that nothing can happen unless he shows up and moves. Our prayer has become, God, let this show run well. Because it's based on what we've established and who we've put in place. It's based on the preacher that we've paid to come. It's based on the, the recording artist we've paid to come and flow. And not about his, his wonder, his, his presence, his, his spirit, his power meeting us right where we stand. It's almost as if the house of God has become nothing more than a game of thrones. Where, where it's about my kingdom, it's about my dynasty, it's my throne is greater than your throne, it's, it's look at all that I've accomplished and all that I've had, I have, we built cathedrals in our own names, we, we establish all of this stuff, our own rituals, our own cultures, our own traditions, not based on Bible, not based on God's standard, but based on our preferences. And what we like, that's why you can go to any house and find different standards because it's based on what we've established, yeah. Elder Vanessa. And not about God's law. We've lost our awe. We lost our reverence for God and the things of God. Our reverence, our, our, our deep respect for God and the things of God. This is how you can have a prophet stand at the altar and cuss out another bishop because we've lost our reverence for God and the things of God. This is why our conduct is all over the place, whether we're in the parking lot of the house or inside the house, because we don't have our reverence anymore 
for God. This is why uh, you can have any type of language go on with our profane selves. This, this is why we can act any type of way because God and, and the things of God. It's, it's almost as if God is just this distant thing that we don't even think about anymore. We don't even honor anymore. Who is this God that we should be in awe of him? Who is this God, this deity, this being that I can't even see, but for some reason I've got to know whom before I stand. Who, 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 who is this God? It's, it's this God that, that appears to Moses in a in a burning bush. It's this, it's this God that, 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 that tells Moses that he's going to intentionally harden the heart of the oppressor in his life so that his wonders can be made magnified. And, and can I sidebar? Maybe the struggle you have in your life isn't about you, but maybe it's so all eyes can be on you when God displays his wonders, his, his, his miraculous miracles, his, his, his impossible possibilities. Isaiah says that, that this God is the one that will make the wise look like fools and he'll remove the intelligence from the intelligence. It's this God that tells the waters when to stop and, and not to approach land. It's this God that commands the winds and the seas. It's this God that is all powerful and all knowing and omnipresent. He's here, there, and everywhere at the same time. It's this God that is omniscient. He's all science. It's this God that is alpha and omega he's beginning and the end he's start finishing all the details in between he is peace he is provision he is our banner he is our healer he is somehow late but but digging vince always right on time at the same time how you late and on time because he's a he's a wonder elder elder Vanessa he's wonder growing up we growing up at the church my, my parents pastored I think once a month we went to the nursing home I think it was once a, once a month we had nursing home ministry and, and, and going to the to the nursing home you would see you would see these seniors who who were old in age and and they may not be able to move like they used to move they maybe sit the whole time and and just kind of rock and just kind of babble or or whatever and, and at some point in the service we we do testimony and we open the floor so so that the seniors can share or, or that they can sing or they can express themselves about God however they want to express themselves and sitting and listening to these seniors at some point somebody will say that God is a wonder in my soul God is the God of my salvation he is a wheel in the middle of a wheel he is the rose of Sharon he is the great I am he is a a heart fixer he's a he's a mind regulator he is a burden barrier he bearer he is a heavy load carrier he is my all and my all he is my battle axe God is he's he is he is past he is he is present he he is future he is he is uh, 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 the the God of my grandma and him he is my God and he's the God of my children's children's grandchildren all at the same time this is who he is. This is the God that we should be in awe of every time we open our eyes. And this is why we gather. 
We don't gather because tradition says we gather on Sunday mornings. No, no. We gather because there's this God. There's this wonder. There's this, this mystery that I'm expecting to meet me at this point at, at this time. And so we rush to the house of God. We don't sit back because it's raining. No, there's a wonder that I've got to meet that's that's going to speak to me this this wonder that makes mountains move and this wonder that speaks in the wind he's going to show up and he gonna he gonna talk to little old me and so I gotta gather everybody in my house and, and nobody can sit behind because I've got to meet this wonder so he can he can he can talk to me he and that same God that spoke to Moses, that same God that sent a message to Daniel, that same God that, 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 that was dealing with David, that same God that speaks to the prophets, that same God that parts Red Seas, that same God that established the earth, that same God that moved in the evening breeze in the Garden of Eden, that same God yes. is the same God that's with me now, that same wonder that I read about, that same mystery that I read about is, is with me. Right now, Deacon Vince, this is how I can rely on God to be my shepherd. This is how I can say that either way I'm good. It's because I've got this wonder, this, this mystery, this God, this deity, this, this being that is greater and higher than I, this, this God that has all the things about my life figured out before my mama met my daddy. He already had the details of my life figured out. It's because he's my cloud by day and, and, and he's my fire at night. This same God, this is how I can my cares and and leave them there this is how I can be at peace and everybody think I'm on drugs this is how I'm not worried and frantic and losing my mind when the storms of life are raging against me because I've got a wonder somebody ought to clap their hands if they believe if you believe you got a wonder you believe that you got a mighty fortress standing behind you. If you believe that there's somebody bigger and stronger that can hit harder, that, that can talk louder. If, if you believe that there is something that you can't explain that somehow rocks with you. How do I gain if I've lost over the course of my life, if I've, if I've lost my sense of awe and my sense of wonder of God? And we almost done, I promise you. I held you up for an hour last week. I looked at that replay and said, oh my goodness, I can't believe I kept those people for an hour. I, I, I'm almost done, I promise you. <laughs> but but, but if, if, if in the course of your life, you've lost your sense of awe of God and, and your wonder of him, man, and your expectation of the possibilities and, and you've somehow taken your life into your own hands and trying to control your own stuff instead of leaving it to your shepherd. If at some point in the course of your life you play, you say that you're the sheep, but you try to play the role of the shepherd. If it, how do I gain my sense of awe of God again? Four really quick things. Number one, you got to slow down. You got to slow down so you can see him. Yeah. Psalm 91, we learned last week, says those who sit down in the presence of God will abide under the shadow Amen. of Shaddai. Psalm 46 told us that, that we have to pause in his presence. It's, it's when you jump off of the fast track. Slow down, take a minute to then see God. 
It's when trouble in your life arises and you pause to remember what God has done for you before. You remember how he brought your mother through. You remember how he, how he sustained your grandma. He, you, you remember what he's done in the life of your family. Even if you had nothing, somehow you had everything. Do not be fooled, people of God. Do not believe the lie that if you are uh, 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 lacking financially that God isn't showing you favor. There was a word that I heard this week that, 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 that talked about it, criticized people of God that, that said that they were blessed and highly favored, but they were on welfare. That's nonsense. Me being on welfare, me being on poverty does not mean that the wonder is not with me. It does not mean that I don't have unshakable faith. It does not mean don't let the world convince you that because you are in lack in uh, uh, the world standards that God has not been carrying you. The fact that you can inhale and exhale says God's been doing something. I gotta, but you only realize that when you slow down. When you're not so quick to jump up because something went awry. When, when you're not so quick to try to figure something out because something fell through. And if you can just pause in my presence, if you can just, you can just. You have to slow down. You have to change the context. You have to take what is familiar and place it in an unfamiliar content. And it, then that thing will become more enlightening to you. What am I saying? You have to take who you are and what you do and lose your sense of ability, lose your sense of knowing everything, and hand it to God and see how differently he does it. Instead of managing your life based on you, take it from your context and put it in who God is, and then watch how God moves. This is how you gain your sense of awe of God. When you slow down, and then you have to change context. Number three, you have to think back. You got to think back to the place you were in when you found God. Not, 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 not that physical location, not, but, but, but psychologically, me me mentally, what what place were you in when you discovered God? What, do y'all remember that spot? Do you remember how, how, how aha you were at God and, and who he is and, and what he can do and how he can take our little raggedy lives, how he can take who we were and what we were and how disgusting and filthy we were and, and the low places that we were and somehow in a moment by a confession, no matter how many years we were wrong, in a matter of a few words can flip that and save us. How that place, go back to the place you were deconvinced where, where you discovered. The song says, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. You've got to cultivate a beginner's mind when you, when you first started out, when when you were excited, when you were on fire, when, when, you, when you had a burning inside of you, it, it said it's like fire shut up in my bones. You, 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 it's go back to the place you were in. You slow down, you change the context, you, you think back, and then finally, you have to recognize who you are 
in comparison to who God is. In other words, Elder Vanessa, you got to you got to check yourself. You you got to you got to put some perspective to your life. I, I love the book of Job because Job, he was a man who had everything, but then lost everything. And and in the course of him. Uh, 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 complaining and uh, to God and, and and giving God all this stuff about I wish I was never born and why would you do this and and how all of this type of stuff God steps on the scene from chapter 38 through 41 to read him God says who you think you are who help, help me to understand who who is it that you think you are, that you can challenge what it is that I'm doing. Who, 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 who is it that you are? Where, where were you when I established the seas? Where were you when I spoke light into existence? Where were you? When I told the mountains to rise, when I told the birds to sing, where, where was you at? Where, where were you? He, he, God said, he said, since you're so smart and, and you think you know everything, he said, he said, Joe, riddle me this, Batman. He said, do you know where I store the, the snow? Do you, do you know where, where the mountain goats give birth? Do you, do you know? Where the lightning is stashed. Help, help me to remember. I can't, I can't seem to, to remember, Joe, but, but do you know where the limit of the sea is? Do you know where the exact time is that the season should change? When I consider macro God, the heavens, the works of your hands, who is micro me that you would even think about me? Who is, who is micro me that, that you will want to carry me for all the years of my life? Even when I come into you, then step out of you, then come into you, then step out of you. When I show up to the altar crying, said I'm never going to do it again. And then as soon as I get in the car, my phone ring and I go back over to their house anyway. Who, who, who am I? That even after all the things that I've done, even after all the things that I say about you, that you still, you still hold my hand. You still stand there like the father and the prodigal son. You still are calling me a child of yours. All I wanted to say, all I was trying to say to y'all this morning is that God is. He's a wonder. God is. He is the one that you can depend on to, to get you through everything that you're going through in life. He is the one that has carried you through two years of a, of a unknown, unfamiliar, crazy period that, that you thought you would never see in your life. God is. And it's only God that is. Can you imagine what the church would look like if we all just were in awe of God again? We forgot about ourselves and what we've learned how to do and just relied on God. What, what would it look like if we all just showed up and just sat just waiting for God to to do something then all of a sudden somebody in the back starts screaming and losing their mind because because God then ignited something in them and then that ignition ignited something in somebody else and and then that ignition caused the fire to break out and then it began something like a mighty Russian wind in the house because we all got on one accord and we're in awe we're in wonder of God. What I want you to do this week is just reflect on your life. See, what area in my life has I, have I lost my awe of God? What area of my life have I lost 
my, my, my wonder for God? What area of my life have I figured or, or think that I've got it all together and, and it's me and my ability, even, even not intentionally realizing that you've done it? What area in your life do you rely on you instead of God? And then I want you to slow down. I want you to, to change your context. I want you, to, I want you to, to think back. I want you to, to check yourself. Realize that even though God's made you all that, you ain't all that. Y'all know what I'm saying? God is a wonder. God is. No matter where you go, remember whose name you are carrying. Amen. Re remember that the reverence and the respect and the honor that you have for him when you walk through the doors is the same honor and respect and reverence that you should have for him when you're at the game and when you're at your job and when you're at the grocery store and when you're at the bank and when somebody takes your parking spot. Remember! Remember! That I can't act how I want to act because... I'm associated. Yeah. You, you, you hear me, Deacon Tanya? I'm, I, I, I'm carrying somebody's name that I wouldn't dare embarrass. Yes. Because I'm, I'm in awe. As God is. He is a wonder. God is. He is a wonder. You can, people can say a lot of things about God, but you just can't say it to me. You can. You can, you can tell people, people can say that God ain't real all day, but you can't, you can't say it to me because, because this God, this, this deity, even though I can't see him, even though there are mysteries to him that I may never figure out or understand, I know that he's real. I know that he's a wonder. My soul, stand to your feet all over the sanctuary.